Welcome to Downshift, my name is Matt and this is something I've been waiting for a long time. This is the Lexus IS 500 and it is the last V8 sports sedan that you can get in this class. And with a world where the C63 now has half the cylinders of this, it's great to see that Lexus is still bringing some driving emotion. And of course, followers of the channel will know how fond I am of Lexus V8s and specifically the LC500. So with the added practicality of rear seats and a trunk, this is a strong contender for my next car. So before we get ahead of ourselves, today we're covering the coolest and most interesting features of the Lexus IS500. F Sport Performance. Let's get into it. Number one, of course, we have to start with the engine. 5.0 NA V8, same as the LC500 and the RCF, and of course, the deceased GSF. 472 horsepower, 395 pound-feet of torque, but it's the sound that does it for me. 20 mpg also if you care about that sort of thing i have been doing better than that this week but i have been babying it unless i've been fully on it but man what an engine also pretty simple you could expect some reliability from this as well also it should be known that this is not an f car this is the is 500 f sport performance you can tell because it says f sport on here and the manifold is not that crazy blue that we had in the rcf and there's adaptive dampers and an LSD, but you can get that in the IS350. And yes, the brakes are bigger, but they're still not ready to go on track. Something that we experienced at Road America, or someone did, a couple years ago. Which is why I haven't been able to review this car until now. And with traction control off, it's, it's not really, it's not really off. And you don't have a transmission cooler or an oil cooler, so you can kind of think of this more as an IS350 F-Sport with a big V8 swap. Still pretty good though. And then there's the transmission, which is the ASIN 8-speed, which is really kind of the biggest thing holding this thing back against things like the M340i or the Mercedes with their 9-speed. But this thing is all rear-wheel drive all the time, something that can't be said about really anything else out there. Everything else is all-wheel drive. The Audi, the Mercedes, and the BMW. And then with the Torsen LSD managing torque back here, you can do 0-60 to 60 in about 4.3 seconds. It's not the fastest, but it's definitely not slow. And then we get to the best part of the car, and for me, the reason that you buy this car, and it's the exhaust. This is the first non-F car to get the stacked quad exhaust. You don't even get the stacked quad exhaust in the flagship LC500 with this engine, but you get it here, and it sounds fantastic. And this is a weird thing I've noticed, but every single piece of glass says Lexus on it. The windshield, driver's window, rear driver's side window, the back, clouds move, the back, I promise, the rear passenger, even on the front, the front, and not to be outdone, also the sunroof. And then there's the seats. I love Lexus V8s and I love white interiors. So this is my spec. I love the seats here. They're super comfortable. Lumbar adjustment. You have heating, you have cooling. I will say the cooling button, so the heating button is orange. The cooling shows up as green, but it's facing the sky. So unless it's dark or unless it's nighttime, you really can't tell if your cooled seat's on unless you cup it and shield it from the sun. Oh, and you have heated steering wheel as well. Pretty nice. And then let's talk about the head-up display, or maybe we won't because it doesn't have one. But then I want to talk about the center screen. It's updated and it's now touch screen, which is fantastic. You no longer have to use the silly trackpad down here, which has given me brain aneurysms in the past, but it's nice. You got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. They are wired. Uh, you do have 360 cameras, which is impossible to see. I apologize. And you do have a reverse camera, which is bigger, but do you see the warping here? Like it's bored. Don't use this. Use this or look over your shoulder. Do not use this. You will crash into something, I'm sure. And not to be outdone, it's a Toyota Lexus product. So you have this button here, which deploys the egg view, which is the most useless camera thing ever. Who is this helping? The car is not even the right color. But you do have Mark Levinson audio, which is fantastic. 
but you also have a CD player? And I legitimately don't know the last time that I played a CD. It would have had to be between the years 2006 and 2008, because I most definitely was, it was pre-high school for sure. And then I thought this was interesting. On your floor mats, it says Lexus IS. Now, generally speaking, it'll just say the brand. It'll just say Lexus, or it'll just say the IS. The Audi R8 that we just test drove just said R8 here. So it's weird to see it say the logo, the full name, and the model. Very specific, very special carpeted floor mats. And then we're gonna talk about the size. Now this is truly compact. And like I said, everything else has gotten bigger as it's gotten newer. So this is smaller than the C43, it's smaller than the M340i. In truth, it's actually very similar in size to a new Honda Civic, but it weighs just under 4,000 pounds. So it's still kind of thuck. But now let's talk wheels and tires. This is your upgraded 19 inch satin black forged BBS wheel. This is the best way that you can spend $2,500. I'm convinced. It's wrapped in a Bridgestone Potenza S001L. The grip is pretty good, but this is the look. This is what you want. The standard wheels are kind of meh. This is the ticket, chief. And then I want to touch on some styling in general. Now, I think this thing looks the business. Here we have it in Grecian blue. It's the same blue as the Aegean. We're not getting the sparkle here, but I'll overlay some B-roll because this is like bass boat sparkly. But here you have your triple beam LEDs with your Lexus check. It's very sharp, looks very cool. The weird thing is, it doesn't say Lexus anywhere. Most cars have Lexus or, you know, the model name in the headlight. It doesn't have it here, which is a little bit odd. Your hood is three inches taller to house all that V8. And then of course you've got a nice mean mug front face. These, those are functional. Yep, same bit on the outside. And then coming around the side, we talked about the upgraded 19 inch wheels. We have our front fender, F Sport badge right there. It's very AMG of the car. And then around the side profile, look at that little, little curve there. Now it says it has black wing mirrors, which is half true. <laughs> But it's a nice handsome sedan shape. You get around to the back here, you've got a full width LED tail bar, but this bit right here, your turn signal, that's halogen, that's kind of whack. You do have a black uh, lip spoiler that's kind of double bubbled up there. You've got a more aggressive diffuser and that stacked quad exhaust that we talked about before. I do like it in this Grecian blue, but I think it would still be the Iridium Silver for me. Here we go, gauge cluster, look at it. Watch the startup. Yes, we have the Ziggy Stardust, IS500, and yes, the best part. Yes, the gauge cluster moves. It's mostly digital, but it does move, and that's just the coolest thing. It's originally from the LFA, and of course, it also changes a little bit based on your drive mode. This is Eco, you push the button down, and that's normal or comfort. You go over, it's Sport, and then the white intensifies for Sport S+, Plus, which is very cool. And then uh, you also have the rev limiter tick. So this needle is orange, but as you go and shift in Sport Plus, wherever you shift, it's gonna leave a little blue indentation or a blue tick at the end. So you can see exactly what RPM you shifted at while it's gone down in the rev range, which is just kind of interesting, kind of cool. But then there's this clock here. Now, most luxury cars have a clock somewhere on the dash, and this is no exception. It's very Lexus, it's very classic luxury, but if you look closely, it's also woven with carbon fiber to let you know it's not just a luxury car, it's not just a Lexus, but it's also sporty and fast. And I love this touch. You can see there's no button for your dome lights at all. They're touch sensitive on the plastic. Sweet. And then I know I dinged the VW products, the GTI for the sliders, but this one does get a bit of a pass for me. It's just like somehow more satisfying. And of course you can push the buttons on either side, but I just like it more. And then in your center console, of course, you do have the trackpad. It's a touch screen now, but you still have the trackpad if you want to use it. I don't know who wants to use it, but you can. And then while we're talking about this, I also think it's just interesting that they put the snow mode button next to the traction off button. I feel like this is like asking for it, you know what I mean? And then just some words on the interior in general. Like I said, it's kind of old. This car has been around a while. The steering wheel is a bit old and familiar. The dash layout's a bit old and familiar. You don't have a wireless charging pad. You do have that CD player that we talked about. It's just, it's just kind of showing its age while the AMGs, the Ms, and even the non-high performance versions have just gotten newer and refreshed more recently. 
And just like in the GR86, we're talking turn signals because it's still got the dumb ones. Just, if I push it up, just stay up so I can cancel. BMW moved on. Please move on, Lexus. And every visor you'll see will have this warning on there, but not every visor you see will have a place to put cards and important stuff and important stuff for your, your passenger as well. How thoughtful of Lexus. Then I wanna talk about these buttons for a second because this is your adaptive cruise and driver assistance suite, and it's pretty good. It's not quite as good as the new Corolla system, Toyota's 3.0 system, but this is 2.5 and it has worked pretty well. It achieves the same result, it just doesn't quite do it with the same finesse as the 3.0 system, but that's technology for you. Still, very good, very useful. Then there's this fun button right here, which is the rear sunshade. I haven't seen one of these in a while. Actually, let's do a test here. I'm gonna put it up, and then as I shift into reverse, it should go down. Oh, <gasps> and it does. And then I wanna talk rear seats. Again, a product of the age, they're gonna be tight, but check this out. Look at how tall this center lip is. It's normal to have some sort of like drivetrain tunnel here, but this is a mountain. Let me, let me step in here. I'm 6'1 for reference and I, I can't really sit behind myself. I mean, I can, but it's gonna take forever to get there on camera. So again, I, I can fit. I don't really wanna spend a lot of time back here, but I can. Also, no chargers back here, no air conditioning, or no climate zone, but you do get vents. You also get map pockets, and you also get this weird cartoon telling you how to sit with the headrest. Anyway, you don't get a pass through here, and when you deploy the cup holders, when you deploy the cup holders, when you de- What the- What the f Okay, there we go. They don't- They don't really work <laughs> that well. Am I just stupid? Lexus, please tell me if I'm stupid. And then one of the last things is trunk chat. Now, it's probably hard to see because it's dirty now, but it says F-Sport here on your bumper. Look at that. Look at that. And then also, the trunk release button is this one. It's just square. It's usually like longer. Again, it's just a strange thing to notice, but I did. You've also got the classic Lexus fang to close it. But look at your trunk. It's actually a pretty good size. My tripod is, is I mean, it totally fits. Obviously, I can fit all of my stuff back here. It's a very good size. You cannot drop the rear seats from the trunk, but seats do fold 60-40. And then it curls back and you get the carpet back and you can look underneath here to see the world's ugliest spare tire. Nice. And the last thing, as it always is, is price. Now these things start at about $59,500, AKA 60 grand, but you're gonna wanna upgrade to the premium package. And this one as tested is about $66,000, which is a lot of money, especially considering all of the old age stuff we talked about. And also considering that I went on BMW's website and specced out my ideal M340i, more or less, and it was like the exact same money. But we'll talk about that more when we do our full and comprehensive review, which we'll do next week. So those are the 24 most interesting things about the Lexus IS 500F Sport Performance. Now make sure you stay tuned and subscribe because next week we'll be doing our full and comprehensive deep dive review and I'll be making my decision on whether or not this will end up in my garage full time. So thanks to you for watching, thanks to Lexus for the loan, and we'll see you in that video.